Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I customize my own Clash Pro. So I got a new Clash Pro here, and I'm going to show you how I customize it and weigh it to and weigh it and balance it to how I like it. Uh, the process of knowing what you like is trial and error. You have to add weight, try it, take weight off sometimes, try it, add even more weight and try it. So it's not an easy process uh, unless you know kind of exactly how you want it. I've been doing it this way for 20 years. So I'm used to doing it this way. Whenever a racket comes in, that's, you know, that's my racket, this is what I do to it, okay? So hang tight. The first thing I do, I take the grip, take the plastic off. I actually take this grip off because Wilson does not make good replacement grips. So this comes off. Plus I got to add lead anyways. Wilson, you're killing me here. See, I, I hate these things that, look at that, it's coming off. Now it's coming off. Oh Lord. This might take me 10 years. All right, first thing I do is rip that off. So the first thing I do is I take off the, the crappy Wilson grip that they give you with the racket. And then now I'm gonna grab a reach over for a scissor. So I'm gonna actually lead this up now. I'm gonna put four strips um, along each of the major bevels, okay? I'm gonna show you how I do that. I go all the way down from here to there, just right about there, okay? I bet you're asking me, why don't you just put silicone in the butt cap? Well, I kind of want my weight evenly distributed throughout the racket. And this is kind of the best way to do it. Um, if I were to plug the butt cap with the, or to pl plug the, you know, under here with silicone all the way through, most of it would only be about here to here. I mean, I guess I could get it all the way up, but it would be a really hard to control that. Um, and I re it, re it would be really hard to control how much I put in there too. Um, this way I can control it way easier. So four even strips of lead. And I, I know a couple of you uh, commented that um, you know, I should be careful with this lead tape. Uh, I do wash my hands after I'm done. So thank you. Thank you for your concern. Um, I've been handling this lead for, I want to say, Jesus, like at least 30 years now. So the first one went on, that major bevel, the flat side, whatever you want to call it. The second one, so I line it up with the bottom here like that on the cap, and then I try to put it right through the middle, right? Just like that. I line it up to the bottom here, like that, right before the thing, see it? And I hold it down there, and I make sure it's aligned with the bevel, because this is a narrower bevel here. I want to keep it as flat as I can. Okay, so a little bit more there. That's okay. I just, I'll trim it later. And the last one. And then the last 
last one goes here. Oop, line it up there. Oops. Line it up there. Make sure it's all straight. Okay, so that's how I want it. I'm looking at the top. That's okay, that's not too bad. So, okay, the four sides, okay? Okay, next I'm gonna put a shrink sleeve over this because I only change replacement grips. I don't change over grip nor use over grip. Therefore, every time I rip my replacement grip out, I would rip this lead out. So that's why I put a, uh, a shrink sleeve on it. So this is a 1 16th shrink sleeve. The black ones are 1 8th grip to make it one size bigger. So this is half of a grip size. This will increase it only half of a grip size kind of the way I like it okay so it's kind of a double it's doing double duty holding my lead and increasing it very little okay so let me show you how to put this on I'm gonna put it through so I'm gonna put it through so far that is so what I like to do is I'd like to see where the throat starts, right? And kind of see, try to measure for the shrinkage. So I'm gonna put it right about there. So maybe about an inch from where I need it to stop. And then maybe by about an inch and a half to two inches on the bottom there, because it will shrink. Uh, that's why it's called a shrink sleeve. So I got my heat gun out. You can use a, if you don't have a heat gun, you can use a, uh, uh, hair dryer as most of you probably have at home or even use the top of the stove which I've heard people do too so it looks like this is shrinking not as much as I thought so I'm gonna pull it down a bit so that it shrinks a little more evenly there So I'm, that's going to be pretty much perfect now. Getting tight here. So the key to this is if you have a heat gun, make sure you keep it moving or else you're going to burn a hole right through the sleeve. Oops, time to turn it to low now. So there's a high and low setting on this thing. And you will burn your hand if you're not careful. This thing is hot. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so what I do with this is, hold on. So I have a razor blade here, a single edge razor blade. So I don't cut myself while trying to do this. So single edge razor blade, these are cheap. Um, you look, look at what I'm doing, right? I go like this to poke it, right? Come right through and I'm gonna bring it around like this all i'm doing is following the racket's edge until i'm done there right so i've followed the racket's edge i could actually do it further up but i don't want to do that because i've learned that if i do it further on the edge that it will actually shift up while i'm playing this this thing will actually move which I don't want. So you do want to leave this much here so it doesn't move, okay? So that looks pretty perfect to me. I'm gonna put my favorite grip on, which is the Head Hydrazor Pro. This is the one I always use on the racket next. It comes in a black 
It comes in a fluorescent yellow too, but I like the white. Why do I like this grip? Very neutral. It allows me to change uh, from forehand to backhand pretty easily without being too tacky. So. tell you all the time for those of you who haven't seen me do this before always we want to keep this line right nice and pretty therefore we cut this way so you get this edge if we cut this way down we get an ugly edge so you do this for those of you who haven't watched my other videos before so edge 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 pretty edge, right? I got my finishing tape. So that's the start of my racket. That's how I, that's the first thing I do is go after the the handle and I add the lead there with the shrink wrap. So that's number one. So I'm gonna start adding lead to the rest of the racket now. Next, I'm gonna I'm gonna put lead here in the throat, both sides of that throat. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna measure it out there to there. Gonna end right about there. I'm just gonna double it. All right, so go down there, make sure I'm centered. Put it up there. Okay. Piece number one. So like that. Why did you put it down there? Okay, so my editor just asked me why I put lead in the throat area. What I'm trying to do is, because this racket is so headlight, I'm trying to actually put weight in the whole racket. So you saw me put four strips in the handle already. Now I'm adding it here. So I'm gonna feel this weight a little more. And then next I'm gonna put it here and then, at, and then I'm gonna finish at the top, depending on what it weighs. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I, I don't want it. I've, I've had rackets where I've taken a head guard and just loaded it up like, uh, like uh, Rafa, right? But when I swing it, it, it the, the head kind of takes over and it's, it's easy when it's up here to, you know, to do this, right, to raise it but it, it drags a bit. So I'd rather have a, a heavy all around where I can actually flatten it out and feel more solid through, if that makes sense to you. I'll, I'll, I'll explain more when I'm done uh, with it. So next I'm gonna take, so that was a half inch lead. I got the quarter inch lead now to here, like that. Let me 
made four strips that long. Give or take them, you know, a little bit's fine. I'll, uh, I'll trim it as I need. Okay, so that's that. Looks like this one's already coming apart. So all I do is I go at the line here. And then the excess. Just cut off. Okay. So same thing on the other side. I don't know how perfect you guys want to do this but I mean it's just this is just some guidelines that I do for myself um, it's just trial and error like all this adding lead and you know having specific specs and all this stuff it's it's trial and error it's a, it's years and years of trial and error as to how you like your racket um, okay so that side's done now and then you go to the other side. Now you do the same thing. Final side. Turn it over. A little extra sticking out that's not gonna hurt it so i was playing with it like this for the longest time right and then i decided that i needed a little more in the head right. so i'm just i just like to feel it. yeah it's missing some in the head i can feel it already because this is just it's taking off like in this area it just kind of Right, I don't feel anything up here now. Because of the lead here and here, I could, I can definitely feel it. Like Djokovic kind of gets his head speed because it's weighted here and here. It, it's it's more stable when you're coming through, kind of like almost flat through like this, like what he does. Whereas Nadal, Nadal's weight is here. And so is uh, Feds actually. So he's able to manipulate the head a little more because if you think about it, weight, the handle's here and the weight is here through here, right? So it's easier to twist it and do this, you know, do this, right? When the weight's here to throw it out. So the way Joker does it, you hit through a little easier. The way he kind of comes around like this. When the weight's at the top, it's easier to manipulate up because it's kind of with you, like a straight line through the top is where the weight is. 
So since it feels um, kind of headlight to me still, I'm gonna do one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm gonna do six holes at, right at the top here. Or right at the end of that head guard. I'm taking a little something there. Something like that would be perfect. And then I got the other one. I'll do it like this so you guys can see. A little extra here and there is not going to make a whole lot of difference. Just keeping it on makes the most difference. All right, so let's see how that feels. Okay, there it is. That's extra. There, that's the weight I was looking for. Yep, that's the weight I was looking for. Well, without this one at the tip here, um, it felt really headlight. Now with the you know, basically not much at the top. Um, I can feel the head now. I can feel it drop now. So, but, but so uh, again, back to Djokovic, without the, the uh, lead at the top, right? He actually can get that racket through a little faster, right? And, and, and kind of uh, his swing would be quicker. When it's at the top, you know, it's it's like you got a a hammer, right? And it's at the top, and you're 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 when you come through it, it actually punishes the ball. But but um, but it, you feel all the weight here, and there is a drag. I mean, those guys are strong enough where they can manipulate the drag, and you know, Nadal, you know, this deal, right? This deal. Um, but he's strong though. Like for you and for me, I, I can't, I couldn't do it when I, like I said, when I loaded up all the weight in the head, I was like, Oh my gosh. It's like when I got it going, it just kind of took over. I couldn't really control that, that top so much. It actually wanted to, to, you know, come through most of the time because that's where my momentum was going. So when I'm customizing, um, customers rackets I always have to take out the strings because I have to start with a let's say a blank palette and this is a blank palette there's you know uh, the strings actually uh, I have to calculate for them especially if they're different strings or um, you know it's just easier for me to have no strings in them Right, and maybe start from scratch, like strip off the grip, see if there's anything in the butt, um, and start there. Like if I have four of them, I prefer them that way. That way I can uh, manipulate them the way I want to, not have to calculate for the strings, even though all four are the same. Like when I'm doing Roger's racket up there, if I could cut the strings out, um, I could probably make a closer um, clone of it uh, but you know whatever I can't cut the strings out on that one but this is mine and I'm gonna hit the scale and see what I got all right so what does my racket weigh before strings three forty one 341 grams. What's the swing weight? 304. So relatively headlight still. So let's, where, where did it balance out at? Move it over so you guys can see. 295 on this one. 295. 
millimeters. So this is all before strings. So we're gonna reweigh everything after I string it and then see what we got. But that's those are the numbers before strings. All right, hold tight. All right, guys, so um, the racket was strung with Selenko Confidential 16 light at 48 pounds. I've already played with it and I need to make a couple adjustments to it. Uh, the thing I noticed about this particular racket after I did what I do to it with the lead and all that other stuff you saw was that the forehand was kind of coming up a little quick. I needed it to stay in the zone a little longer. Um, plus the backhand, I need to feel more weight in the head. Um, so I need to add a little more weight to the head. So what I'm gonna do now, instead of six holes, I'm gonna rip these two off and go to eight holes. So I'm gonna add one more there and one more there. So I'm gonna extend that out to, to that much so that I can add more head weight to this racket. All right, I'll show you how I'll do that. So first I'm just gonna peel these off with my fingers. So. Peel that off, flip it over. Peel that off. Okay, I'm gonna go to my lead, get the scissors, and we're gonna go four out from the middle there, four out from that middle there. So about that much. All right, so I cut one strip out. I'm gonna cut the second one there. The hardest part of this damn lead is peeling the damn thing. Oh, it came good today. Easy, easy today. All right, get you a good angle at this. So there's my middle, one, two, three, four. So I want it right there at the end of the grommet, okay? And I'm putting it as close to the grommet as I can. Okay, I got a little extra there. I'm gonna trim that when I'm done. So I'm gonna flip it around, do the same. Again, at the end, one, two, three, four, that one's real close. Let me just leave that one and just trim that one right there. Okay, so I got a little bit hanging out right here. I'm just gonna take my scissor or a little cutter or some sort and just I'm just gonna push down so it doesn't fly off if I shank one off the top. Have you guys ever shanked one off the top or off the lead and the lead comes flying off or comes loose? I know you have, because I've done it. Okay. So let me wave it around. Oh yeah, that's, that's better. I could feel a little more weight at the top. Okay, so that's how I customize my Clash Pro. Try it on yours if you wanna add a little weight. Uh, most of these Clash Pros are really, really head light. So you probably wanna you know, add lead to the sides like what I did and possibly to the top. Um, I, you know, I went overboard and added it to here 
and then I added the four strips there just to make the whole thing heavier. But if you want to make it head heavier, you know, just put it on the sides and put it on the top. All right, so I want to show you what this racket that I just prepared for myself, what it weighs, what it balances at, and what the swing weight is. Because my preferences do change, and this is what I currently like. So here it goes. Here is the balance. And this thing's really head light. Wow. Three, 305 millimeters. So even with all the lead in there, I've rebalanced it out with the, uh, the weight in the uh, handle. All right, let's take it to the scale. Okay, so at the scale, Fifty nine point five. Let's see what the swing weight is. Three forty one. Let's analyze, guys. So currently, in this new clash, this is what I'm feeling now. So weight close to 360. That's pretty high, right? With the string, with the strings, with the weight, um, I kind of like it in that range. Uh, whenever I ask for a racket, whenever somebody wants to make me a racket like Angel, um, I usually want it before strings um, at about 330. That way, I can mess with it myself. But uh, the balance, 305, that's pretty head light. So I want to feel weight, but I want to feel weight overall and slightly into the head. So as you can see, that's pretty head light. That's actually very head light for a rocket like this. But I loaded up all the weight in the handle. So you guys that tell me you want to make your um, light rackets, heavier right all you have to do is do what i did with this racket is load it up in the handle because on those light rackets they've loaded it up in the head already um, that's to protect you from getting tennis elbow so couple strips couple strips from the middle down four strips on the four big sides um, and then put your grip back on so strip it all down lead strips four sides all the way down, then put the grip back on and then put your over grip on. That's how you do it. I know a couple of you have asked me that. So do that and uh, and you should be fine. You'll balance it back out. Um, swing weight, right? Because this thing weighs 360 grams and I've loaded up all the weight here, right? The swing weight, I'll feel everything from my hand up to the tip of the racket. So all this is swinging forward. So I will benefit from the mass of all the lead that I've added in there, including the handle, because I'm holding it at the bottom and I'm swinging all the mass through. Therefore, all of it will equate to the whole racket coming through, the full mass coming through and helping me with power, right? Helping me with control right? Somebody's hitting a hard ball at me. All I have to do is just connect with it and I can send it back just as fast, if not faster than it came, right? That's what all this does. This lead on the side will help me extend my sweet spot out. This lead at the top will help me ex extend my sweet spot towards the top. So it, it stabilizes this whole sweet spot right here. 
All right, so if you want to customize your racket, I mean, I pretty much customize this whole racket. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I hope this helped you. Okay, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.